we have started relational model in this unit we will going to learn structure of relational data relational integrity relational algebra functional dependencies normalization and multi value dependency uh, we have discussed what is relational model i told you that dbms are having various models like we can say network model er model and the relation model okay so this is also comes under the uh, we can say step 2 of sdlc i told you that sdlc are having various steps like it is having analysis it is having design coding testing right so whenever you wants to make any system you have to first gather the requirements and from that requirement we have to start drawing design i already told you that whenever your father wants to make a new home for you people and what will he do he will consult everyone in a family he will ask your mother what are your requirements he will ask your grandparents what are your requirements and everybody is having their own requirement so based on this requirement he will going to give the priorities which are the more important requirements and which are the less important right but available land available money are limited so what he will do he will consult a system architect or civil engineer that person is going to we can say decide the priority Prioritizing requirements. It is going to be designed. Blueprint of your house will going to be ready. And from that available blueprint, you select and design for your home. What I'm going to tell you, you cannot start the direct construction because if there are some changes coming, every time to make changes is very much time consuming as well as costly. So. if you have some design on paper like blueprint you can directly make changes into that blueprint for same example whenever you wants to make any system for example uh, you wants to make a indus university system you have gathered the requirement related to the uh, faculty profile related to student data attendance examination library management system whatever facilities available with the indus university you all have gathered that particular facility for making the erp system of indus university so before making actual system you need to draw various diagrams like class diagram state diagram sequence diagram er diagram this er model and relationship model basically uh, deals with the back end side database side right so project is having two parts front end and back end back end design will come in first priority once you have to design your back end and from that back end the front end will going to design if i want to make a form of two student login for my gmail account so student table first i should have which consist of student number or you can say username and password for the login table suppose i am having username and password column in this table so from this table i can make a form which consist of two fields username and password so first back end will going to design then your form designing will going to happen now what what criteria you have to remember while making such kind of back end design first thing is you have to find out the entities entities can be anything any real world object can be known as a entity now we can say sdlc is a older concept now people in the industry they are using scrum they are using agile every days are all the stakeholders are meeting together and they will decide the progress they will discuss the progress right so first you have to 
identify the entity don't directly try to draw the er diagram list out the entity at some uh, we can say rough page of your supplementary or whenever you are making for your project final year project or uh, whenever you will join industry and you need such kind of design kind of thing so you have to first collect your entities suppose for industry university students are entity staff entity library is one entity books are entity so what you guys are doing you are collecting all this entity you have to establish the relationship between this entity and find out the attributes of this entity this things we are doing with the er model but now we are learning relation model in this unit so relation model is in form of table this table consists of rows and columns right you can see here the table consists of rows and columns table known as a schema or the relation row represent the instance schema can be skeleton it's a structure other no name of row is tuple and other name of column is attribute degree is the number of rows means how many number of rows your table is having total number of rows are known as a degree cardinality and the degree is number of column i told you yesterday you have to find out degree and cardinality from this table so here in this table there are main four columns 1 2 3 and 4 so i can say that number of columns total number column is equal to number of rows we have entered into that table it is cardinality uh, then we have discussed uh, relational algebra which consists of set operations relational database specific operation and set functions set operations are union intersection set difference and cartesian product and relational database operators are sigma pi join and set division and the set functions are sum average count mean and max okay. now you have to reply me any one of you can unmute yourself and reply me which operation i can use for selecting columns anyone pi very nice its name projection okay. suppose i want to select uh, data horizontally i'm interested in selecting row in that case which operator i can use sigma in name of that operator name of that operator select select selection okay very nice so sigma is used to select the rows horizontally from the table and projection is used to select the columns from the table vertical pi right i have given you example okay uh, see suppose i'm having this three tables and now i'm interested in selecting only one column rating from table as well so how can i write it can you and me how can i project from the only rating column from table s1 anyone reply why are you not able to reply i am interested in only selecting this column right and for column by selection which operators we are using pi rating pi rating pi rating and from which table i am selecting s1 okay pi and rating is going to select from the s1 very nice okay now suppose i am interested in selecting column age from table s2 so in that case what can i write down by age for my i am interested by in age. selecting very nice pi age s2 if i am interested in selecting two column from the table sid and did in that case what can i write down column see see whenever you want to select a column pi must be there right but here we are selecting more than one column so you tell me how can i select pi sid comma bid sid comma bid from r1 from 
Okay, very nice. So you can see here we are having this three table R1, S1, and S2. Column by selection, vertical operation. It is applied on single table, so it is known as a unary operator and it is denoted by symbol pi. Right? Suppose I want to retrieve the age from the table S2, then I have written here pi age S2. Suppose you want to retrieve S name and rating from S2, means this is the S name, this is the rating. I'm interested in only these two columns, right? So pi, you can see comma. There is more than one column you are selecting. It means you have to separate it out by using the comma. Why this is needed actually? Why this kind of operation is needed to perform on a table? Uh, right? We are having, we can say, 100 employees uh, in Indus University. And Indus University is maintaining this kind of table or data employees which consists of the uh, column we can say like employee name employee department id employee address employee telephone number employee family details means how many members are there in family employees qualification details employees experience details so there are we can say in that particular there are more than hundreds of columns related to that particular employee but all that time everybody is not interested in all the columns we are interested in the column. As a student, you are interested in only employee name and you can say department number, right? Or where that particular person is sitting. So whenever you need only three columns, then why are you retrieving the whole table again and again? Because in retrieving, there is no security. People can know about the salary detail of that person. Uh, again, there is a uh, security uh, problem like somebody will going to send a uh, anonymous mail or some kind of harassment is there some details will going to spread everywhere so this kind of and every time you are retrieving it means it requires lots of memory uh, storage space lots of time so because of all these problems what we are doing we are selecting interested column by using this projection of it right okay. these are the mathematical form of your uh, relational table second one is selection selection is used to select the row right for horizontal selection, we are using the selection operator. And selection operator is donated by sigma. There are two types of operators, unary and binary. Some of the operators are there, which can apply on unary table. Only single table is enough for operating with that operators. And some of the operators are uh, like, they need two tables. Whenever you want to perform any kind of operation, you need a two table, right? So, Sigma is a row-wise selection, horizontal selection. Okay, now I'm giving one exercise and you have to answer me. So whenever you are using Sigma, you need a particular condition. You can see here, uh, if I'm interested in range of employee from table S2, whose rating are greater than eight. I'm not interested in any other row. I'm not interested in any other data, right? Suppose uh, you are uh, interested in selecting only those faculty who are working with the CE department. So it will going to retrieve the uh, faculty's detail who are belongs to CE department. Somebody is interested in seeing only the detail of the faculty who are working with the mechanical department. So as per your uh, requirement, you can apply the query, you can put the condition, and you can retrieve the data. Right. So here I'm interested in selecting uh, those rows and those employee who are having rating greater than 8. But at the same time, I'm, I don't want to retrieve everything. Suppose I'm giving this condition now. In that case, I can retrieve all the uh, data. It's four, this four, SID, SNAM, rating, and age of these two people, first and fourth. Because I have not shortlisted column here. I have given uh, everything. But now I'm interested in only two columns, S name and rating. So in that case, what I can do, I have to first give the condition sigma rating greater than eight. So two rows are going to select. So I'm interested in only two column as name rating. Told you for column by selection, you have to apply the pi. So using this pi and sigma combination, you can select any kind of required information. So I'm selecting S name and rating using pi, projecting this to column. And from this column, I need a detail, those whose ratings are less than 8. Right? Okay. Now, suppose I'm giving you uh, one uh, exercise, and you have to reply me. OK. 
I want to select uh, SID, S name. Listen properly. I'll ask you. I want to select SID, S name, and age from table S2, where the age is equal to 35. Right? The age is equal to 35. So, can anyone reply? How can I write down? Pi SID. You have to select it. Pi SID, comma, S name, comma, age, sigma age equal to 35. Excellent. And from S2. So you have to mention table here also. See here, I have mentioned. Are you able to see it? Yeah. See here, you have to mention the table also. Because from which table we are exactly retrieving, that is also important. Next operator is union operator. This operator is required two tables two input relation because it is binary operator you cannot apply this operation on single table it will retrieve all the rows from both the table and it is going to eliminate the duplicate rows here i'm applying union s1 union s2 so the rows which are duplicated for example here which row is duplicated in both the table find out first 55 58 and 31 right this two rows are repeated in both the table so it will come one time only so 22 will be there 31 will be there 58 44 and 28 whenever you are taking union of these two tables the next is intersection intersection again it's binary operator it requires two relation it is going to uh, we can say retrieve the common uh, rows or common tuples between the two tables. So, which are the common rows in these two tables? Second and third. 31 and 58 is going to repeat here, right? So, you can retrieve 31 and 58 as an answer while you are doing the intersection. Third one is set difference. Again, it's a binary operator. You need a two table. I have given you example example that if the data is available in one table and not available in another table that is also uh, that is only come as output for example i'm taking subtraction of 5 minus 3 so it is 2 right so the value which is remaining in first value that will come as output uh, here in this s1 table i'm having 22 i'm having 31 i'm having 58 right in s Two table. I'm having 28, 31, 44, and 58. So I can say the, uh, that 31 is uh, repeated, 58 is repeated. Only the value 22, which is available in S1 but not available in S2, that will come as output. If I'm taking S2 minus S1, so in that case, uh, what is going to happen? The value which is available in S2 and not available in S1 will come as output. So you can see here, um, 31 and 58 is going to repeat but 28 and 44. These two are, these two row are not going to repeat in S1, but it is available in S2. So 28 and 44 will come in this S2 minus S1, which means in set difference. The cross product. Second name of cross product is known as a Cartesian product. Again, it is a binary operation. You need to uh, combine whenever information of Two tables in that case we are taking Cartesian product symbol is cross so each one each row of one table will going to pair with the each row of other table here one by one row you have to select I'm selecting first row this 22 which is going to multiply with the two rows of this second table as one you can see here in output right now next row I'm taking is 31 that is again going to multiply with the 22 and 58 of this table Third row 58, that is going to multiply with the uh, row of S1. So this is the Cartesian product. Next is division. It contains all the tuples such that for every tuple in B, there is an XY tuple in A. Its symbol is, we can see here how it will going to work. You can see here, there is the main table A, right? And the other tables are B1, B2, and B3. Now, if I'm going to take A division B, the output is to find out where exactly P2 you will get. P2 is with S1. 
P2 is with S2, P2 is with S3, P2 is with S4. So S1, S2, S3, and S4 are the result. Now, P2 consists of P2 and P4. So you have to find out where exactly P2 and P4 related. So here P2 is there in S1. P4 is in S1. P2 is with S2. P2 is with S3. P2 is with S4. And P4 is with S4. So the output is S1, S2, S3, and S4. Now you, do, you have to find out for P1, P2, and P4. Anyone reply? What is the answer for P1, P2, and P4? Let me clear the screen. Find out the relationship between this B3 table and A table A and tell me what is the output. If I'm taking set difference of A and B3. Anyone reply, Akshat, Bansi? Ma'am, P1, P2, P3, P4. No, no. Uh, you are not getting what I'm telling okay, you. Okay, sorry, sorry. Whatever you are telling me. S1, S2, S3, S4. No. How S2, S3, S4? You can see here, first you have to relate this P1 from this PN table, right? From this B3 table, first you have to select this P1. You have to find out P1 is related with the S1, right? So S1 will come as output. Now you are having P2 here. You can see here P2 is also related with the S1. S1 is come as output. S1 is already there. Now you have to relate this P4. P4 is related with S4. So S4 and is also going to come as output. Yes. But P1 and P2 are related. P1 is also related with S2. And then P2 yes, is, is also related with S3. Yes. So it will yeah, be S1 right. Yes. Here. Again, I have to and check. Is that P1? Is that P1? Yes. It's going to repeat here. Is that P2? Yes. It is going to repeat here three times, right? Yes. So S1, S2, S3, S3 and S4 is the output. Now you are getting. Okay, fine. Shall I go further? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Fine. Fine is used to combine the records of two tables, right? There are uh, various kind of join: inner join, outer join, equi join, theta join. Let's see one by one. Here we are having inner join and outer join. Outer join is having various types like left outer, right outer, and full outer. The two tables are given here. Now you have to join those these two tables. In inner join, you need a common value which is available with both the table why you need a join that is the one question in our mind that why madam we need to join the table and you are right okay so whenever i'm making any project uh, for example we are making project of indus university and i have taken a student as entity staff entity book entity library entity students can give the exam students can attend the classes students can issue the book from the libraries student can do everything pay the fees student is having one value that is called enrollment number that enrollment number is going to be come everywhere with library book table with fees table with timetable uh, table we are having attendance table so this student enrollment number will going to relate with all the table because it is the common field in all the tables i am not telling for all the table student id is a primary key it cannot happen because every table is having their own primary key. If I'm discussing about the book, then book is having their own book ID or book ISBN number. If I'm discussing about the staff, then staff is having their staff ID. So every table are having their own primary key. But the student enrollment number is reflecting everywhere because student is uh, issuing the book, student is paying the fees, student is attending the classes. So that particular student is related. We have to find out the relationship between the database. Then and then we can make our software. Then and then we can make our so uh, system. I can say that, right? So you have to relate this two table. You can establish relationship uh, between the tables by using this primary key and foreign key. Primary key means the value, the key which is which doesn't have a null value. 
there is some value in that particular key null doesn't mean zero or we can say a dash null means nothing primary key can be unique worldwide it doesn't have any duplicate value the next is foreign key foreign key is going to relate two tables the primary key of one table will become a foreign key for the other table because every table is having their own primary key right student table is having primary key student number and book table is having primary key book isbn number so book isbn number is the primary key for the book table right suppose i'm taking isbn number column here and the remaining columns are also there so this isbn number column for this particular book table is a primary key and the student enrollment number is a primary key for this student table right this is the student table this is the book table but student is issuing book so student is giving their enrollment number here also for this table it is primary key enrollment number for this table isbn number is a primary key then what this student id what this student id will, ID will do the student id is known as the foreign key here right because through this enrollment number student is communicated everywhere student is uh, issuing the book student is paying the fees student attend the classes so through this enrollment number enrollment number is a primary key for the student table and enrollment number is a foreign key for the book table enrollment number shows the relationship between these two table right so for joining all the table you need a primary key and you need a foreign key and you need to join the table as and when required right so here for such kind of we can say inner join you need a value which is i can say unique and not null uh, right primary key if it is having if it is not here i have not declared primary key so there are some values duplicate but these two are the common column in both the tables so we can join these tables based on common values so uh, there are some uh, syntax uh, some symbol for making table suppose i want to create a table then i'm having query create table table name i'll i'll if i'll not um, teach you sql portion and then you will not exactly understand all these queries so once i'll finish this unit i'll start sql first okay so select star from employee comma department this star means it is going to select all the column if i have given select employee select if i have given last name then it will going to select only last name last name comma department name then it is going to select only these two column but star means it is going to select everything from table name 1 table name 2 where employee dot department id is equal to department dot department id these two are the common values so from employee table and department table it is going to show all the values it is going to find out the relationship matching values for example 31 so here 31 31 and 31 is department uh, id 31 is having department name sales so you can see here this 31 is having department name sales and 31 and its name is refractory jonas 33 it is with engineering department right so jonas 33 it is going to connect with the engineering department again 33 so 33 strandberg is also working with the engineering department so strandberg and 33 will come under the engineering department robinson and 34 is working with the clerical department so robinson and 34 will comes under the clerical department smith is having 34 again smith is going to relate with the clerical department smith and 34 is going to connect with the clerical department now we can see here john and null which doesn't have any related value here so it will not come 35 is not going to relate with anything so 35 is again not come so those values which are having related values will going to come only uh, in this inner join the next is cross join cross join returns the cartesian product of row from the table in the join in other words it will produce rows which combine each row from the first table with each row from the second table select star from employee cross join department this is the syntax or you can write down select star from employee comma department so what it will going to take one row from uh, the table it is going to come multiply with the all the other row from the table either you can start from this side or this side no issue 
So <laughs> we can see here. If I can take this 31, that is going to multiply with this. That is going to multiply with this. That is going to multiply with Stenberg, Robinson, Smith, and John. So all will come here. Sales will, sales will going to multiply with the referee, John, Stenberg, Smith, and Robinson. Same way, if I'm uh, talking about 33 in engineering, again, 33 in engineering is going to multiply with the all row of this table. Uh, referee tree, John, Stenberg, Robinson, Smith, again, John. So one is going to multiply with the one, two, three, four, five, and six. One is going to multiply with the six. So total uh, 24 uh, rows will be as the output you will going to get. Some of them are cutted over here, but the, the total um, uh, will be 6 multiplied by 6, 24 will be as the output, right? Are you getting cross join? It is similar like cross product. One row of one table will be going to multiply with all other rows of the second table. Are you getting it? Yes, ma'am. OK, fine. The next is outer join. Outer join doesn't require any kind of matching values, matching record like the inner join. Even if there is no matching record exists, uh, the outer join is going to uh, work. It is further divided into the left outer, right outer, and full outer join. So depending on which exactly you want to retain. Um, if I'm talking about the left outer join, so it is going, going to consider only the values which are in left side of the table present but not present in right side of the table so say like star from employee left outer join department on employee dot department id is equal to department dot department id so here you can see a left side table right all the values from the left side table will come whether matching value will be there in right side or not so for 31 you will going to get matching value for 33 there is a matching value again 33 there is a matching value 34 matching value will be there 34 matching value will be there so everything will come here john and null there is no matching value found here in this department table so in that case we have to mention null but this will come all the data of left side table will come as output in left outer join same way if i'm talking about the right outer join so all the information or all the data will come of right outer all the data of uh, right side of that particular table will come as the output whether matching value uh, will be there or not select start from employee right outer join department on department dot department id is equal to department dot department id so you can see here now our right side table is department table Right. We have to find out first matching value. 31 is having matching value. Again, 33 is having matching value. 33 is having matching value. 34 is having matching value. You can see here 35 marketing department. It doesn't have any matching value in first table, even though it will come because it is a right outer join. So all the values of right side will come, whether matching value will be found or not. If not found, in that case, we have to write down null. Okay. Full outer join. Full outer join consists of uh, all the values of both the table will come. Whether uh, there should be matching something or it should not be matching something, but the, but all values will come as out. So select star from employee, full outer join department, on employee.department ID is equal to department.department ID. You can see here everything will come. 31 is having matching. We know matching value, but it will come because it's a full outer join. If no matching found, you have to write down null. 35 and marketing will also come. You can see here, but there is no matching value found. So this is the full outer join. There are certain uh, rules and regulations which are known as a court rule. So, courts rules for the relational model. Let's see one by one all the rules. 
the first rule is information rule this is very important actually uh, because sometimes it, it is going to ask in exam also what they are giving you they are giving you such kind of table right and what they try to do they try to put the value like this one comma two then name suppose a is a name comma b is a name like this so what they wants to do they are putting more than one value by separating out through the comma in one cell which is not acceptable so as per the rule one it is known as an information rule information rule is to be represented as data stored in a cell the row and column have to be strictly unordered okay. what it means uh, it is going to tell that one cell will contain only one value it should be unordered it doesn't matter whether it is uh, ordered or not so it should be unordered so data should be stored in a cell and it consists of one cell will consist of only one value you cannot uh, put more than one by separating through the consist of value this is the first information rule guaranteed access rule your table should be like this you can access the data as and when it is required each unique piece of data should accessible by the combination of table name primary key and attribute so whenever you are making a table table uh, you have to be guaranteed that all the values of that particular table is accessible suppose in this university is having book table in this university is having issue table it is having student table it is having teachers table but if there is no facility of accessing that particular table or the data of table then there is no meaning suppose i want to access the information of a student being a faculty that in that case i can give enrollment number of that student in erp system and i'm going to get all whole attendance information of that particular student it means your software is good right your relation table is proper so this is the second rule of relational table or relational model that your data should be accessible systematic treatment of null values relational model allows each attribute to remain null specifically it must support a representation of missing information and inapplicable information null means missing data not applicable data or no value it should be handled consistently not zero or blank primary keys cannot be null i told you that primary key which consist of unique value which consist of not null value so primary key cannot be null as in when some information which is unknown to us we doesn't have any kind of information related to that particular thing so in that case we can keep that cell as a blank and that cell is known as a null cell null value you cannot put zero because zero is one value you cannot put dash dash is again a value so null can be uh, not any value it is we can say blank next rule is active online catalog based on relational model data dictionary should be stored as a relational table and accessible through the regular data access languages data dictionary to have description of database the same query language to be used on catalog as on applications of database what is data dictionary data dictionary is data about data it consists of metadata data dictionary will uh, contain the information of all the tables and its columns along with its data type and size and description so you need to maintain such kind of data dictionary whenever you are making your project as i told you whenever you will start your final year project you have to make documentation also like srs uh, that is called system requirement specification document consist of a collection of requirements the designing part you have done a class diagram state sequence data flow diagram then uh, you have to put data dictionary means all the table whatever you have made in even presentation faculty is going to ask how many data tables are there so you have to maintain every thing every record and that record is uh, related to database that record is known as a data dictionary data sub language rule 
you have to define one specific language for your database either you can make your data in excel or in sql or in sql server there should be one proper language as per need of your database if you are having very large data in that cannot in that case we cannot use that particular ms excel right so that language is going to support the data definition data manipulation security integrity and transaction management as and when we don't need we need to retry we need to update we need to add suppose there is one student in we can say in this university who has changed his address so in that case we have to change his database we have to change his address so that kind of changes will come so that software will going to support such kind of changes you need a particular language which is going to support a all the kind of changes all the kind of constraints the viewing updating rule the views that are theoretically updatable should be updatable okay. now you have to understand what is view this view we will learn as a whole chapter uh, during this semester view means virtual table which doesn't have its own existence it can be derived from the base table right why you need a view a uh, view provide the frequent access it provide the speed it provide the security for example i'm having table of 100 employees of indus university which consists of more than 500 rows but every time i'm not interested in Uh, viewing all the details of that particular employee i'm not interested in pan card detail in vacancy salary detail in address detail i'm interested in only three columns name of that faculty department of that faculty and phone number of that faculty so in that case to retrieve whole table again and again which is going to uh, create overhead in memory it is going to take lots of time it is going to require lots of space again there is no security so what do you have to do you have to create a view in which you need particular rows only or particular column only so according to that we are creating a view and as as and when we need we are calling that view only some of the views are updatable some of the views are read only views so that read only view will not going to make any kind of changes on base table right so this kind of a viewing update rule should be there high level insert update and delete the system must supports at a time insert update and delete operation it supports like union intersection and minus okay so the next rule is uh, whatever database you are making it should support the insertion updation and deletion operation you cannot make such database which is not going to allow you to update uh, the things suppose i have a library books table so table should be like that software should be like that if new books will come into the library the librarian can add the new books librarian can remove some outdated books so such kind of facilities available with the database you are making it is going to support certain operations also union intersection physical data independence physical storage of data should not be matched to the system some file supporting table was renamed or moved from one disk to another disk it should not affect the application data should be independent it should be independent logically as well as you now you to in your map why i'm doing this thing because my data are distributed it's called it's a like it's kind of disaster I'm going to have uh, if my hard hard disk is not supporting, but in that case my data is scattered, it is copied everywhere, so the information will not going to lose. If one ATM is not working, so in that case you can access your money from the other ATM. Though it is uh, shareable, it will create a local image. Everyone will think that I'm I'm the only person who is using this ATM. so your data should be physically independent you can copy it anywhere you can rename it you can move from one place to another place integrity independence data should be able to enforce its own integrity rather than using other programs integrity rules filter to allow the correct data it should be stored in data dictionary key and check constraint trigger and should be stored in data dictionary integrity independence integrity means what integrity means certain rules and regulations that we have to follow everybody has to follow uh, suppose i am take, uh, taking a uh, example of salary of uh, for example indus employee if and i am putting 
a rule that there is no employee in this university who is having salary less than 2000 right so whenever i'm entering data and i'm entering 200 rupees in that kit my software will give me error this is the violation of your integrity constraint 200 rupees is not allowed right so such kind of independence is also uh, available with your software next rule is distribution subversion rule distribution of portion of the database to various location should be invisible to the users of database a database should work properly regardless of the distribution across a network this layers lays foundation of distributed database as i told you that example of atm banking system distribution subversion rule every bank are having the, uh, their own atm software now so their customers can access money from anywhere uh, the data are distributed you are having your account in Kotak Bank, but you can access your money from any bank of any ATM of any area. Why? Because your data are distributed, replicas are created. So this kind of a subdivision uh, is allowed. Distribution is also allowed. The non, non subversion rule, if lower level access is allowed, it must not be bypassed security or integrity rules. If lower level access is allowed to a system it should not be able to subvert or bypass the integrity to change the data this may be achieved by some sort of locking on encryption your database should allow a security nobody is allowed to break that security and for that security uh, your database system should have username and password so whenever you are using any software most of the softwares are having their own username and password for example if i'm using your indus erp system for check uh, for putting your attendance or mark so in that case in atm then i'm having again the name number otp will going to generate uh, sometimes uh, suppose i'm doing recharge through pay atm and all these things so this kind of security is also provided through your database Okay. Time is about to finish. Akshat? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now you please write down your attendance in chat box. And if you are having any query, you can ask me. I'll send you PPT and recorded lecture both. Thank <laughs> you.